Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And have you ever said this, I need your help, but do it my way? If so, you're probably a little bit of a control freak, but that's okay. Most of us are, if we really admit it. Many patients consider themselves well-informed before they walk into a doctor's office. They often arrive armed with various articles they found on the internet. Nevertheless, most patients know that they must submit to their physician's prescribed treatment plan, or at least consider that treatment plan if they want to see a positive outcome. Most of the time, doctor's orders are not easy to take. At best, they require only minor inconveniences like antibiotics or an ointment or a daily pill of some sort. And at worst, a radical change in lifestyle is required. On occasion, even surgery might be necessary, and sometimes the drugs prescribed can cause debilitating side effects. A patient might be tempted to get a second opinion, and in the natural, that's not a bad idea. However, when we approach the great physician, seeking a second opinion is a pointless exercise. But oh, how we try to find loopholes as God's patients. Although our lives are in shambles when we sit in his doctor's office and we are living in emotional and spiritual pain, we tend to try to step away at the prescription God lays before us, especially when it involves self-control and self-discipline. All too often, when we ask God for advice, we try to sneak a few buts into the equation. Lord, heal my marriage. But I honestly don't want to compromise any more than I have already with that jerk. Lord, I want to draw closer to you, but please don't make me give up my prime time television watching. Lord, I want to see people come into the kingdom, but can't I just send in a check and let somebody else do the work? Lord, please help me lose weight. Take away my desire for bad food. Let the pounds drop off just as long as I don't have to exercise any self-control or exercise at all for that matter. Lord, I'll take it as a sign that I'll never be able to lose weight if Sally brings those treats to the meeting tonight. You know, the one she brings every week. Lord, please bring my son back, but clean him up before he returns home because I just don't want to go through the heartache and the messiness of dealing with any consequences of his sinful actions. Lord, help me with my anger issues, but it's really not my fault. I'm surrounded by idiots after all. Lord, if you take away my craving for cigarettes, I'll never smoke again. Lord, change my wife, change my child, change my car, and change my dog because I just can't live with any of them anymore. Perhaps you've never actually spoken that out loud, but you've probably th thought along those lines. I know I certainly have. God's love for us is unconditional. Never forget that and keep that in mind as I continue. And yet, because he loves us and wants the best for us, God gives us plenty of opportunity for healing and transformation. But it's up to us to follow through on his treatment plan. Did you know one of God's names is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals? When we bring our broken lives to him, Jehovah Rapha has the power to not only heal and deal with our immediate pain, but he holds the power to bring us long-term solutions so we don't step back into the situation that caused us pain in the first place. Yes, he heals us from the inside out. He is our great physician, but there's a condition here. We have to step out of denial. We have to lay down our tendency to be a control freak. We need to submit 
to whatever advice he is giving us. After all, we didn't end up in the doctor's office unless we are ill. And all the things that we tried to do to make things better for ourselves didn't work. So the only thing we can do is first admit that we're ill. And number two, admit that we need the great physician. Mark 2 verse 17. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are weak. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus was addressing the Pharisees when he said that, and not all of the Pharisees were horrible people. Many of them followed Jesus, but the vast majority did not. And these people were the ones who were saying to him, well, I have no need of you because I follow all the rules and regulations. And Jesus, discerning their self-righteousness, said to them, well, I can't help you. If you consider yourself quite able to deal with all the things that are inside of your heart, because I didn't come for people who were perfect and you think you are in your own mind. I came for people who admitted that they are weak and who are in need of my touch. So don't beat yourself up if you recognize yourself in some of today's discussion, but repent of those areas that you have been putting a lot of conditions on before you will accept God's help in a situation. And number two, admit to yourself that everything you've tried in the past isn't working and you're going to lay aside all of those homespun trying to fix things that you've been trying to do. And you're going to set those aside and you're going to go to the great physician empty-handed and say, I've tried it my way. Things have only gotten worse, and so I'm here to submit to whatever your prescription is. And don't be surprised that his prescription is going to call for an ample amount of God's grace and mercy every single day.